Hello there, this is Being God's Obedient Servant channel. And today's Bible study, we're going to be doing 1 Samuel chapters 8 through 11. Um, it's a pretty straightforward reading. It's to lead up uh, to what will be coming up. So, oh, if you're new to this, uh, you just clicked on this. I do highly recommend you go start at the beginning if you're interested in learning the Word of God. Um, I'll start at the, one of my first videos, well, the first video, Genesis chapter 1, and start from there, unless you know quite a bit about the Bible already and you just want to try it out. So, if you like these, uh, these Bible studies, <clears throat> think it may help other people, then I do highly recommend sharing them, and, uh, you know... That's the whole purpose of everything in the Word of God and sharing the Word of God is to help one another understand God's Word. And once again, uh, my Bible study is primarily just reading through the Bible, you know, straight in order and going over which parts are um, uh, lessons that we need to know, what their teachings are, which parts uh, pertain to us today and which parts don't. And... For uh, there's a lot of it, most of it does still pertain today. Only the law, uh, the Israelite law, is the one part that doesn't pertain, and it's pretty much been broken down into four parts. You have circumcisions, dietary laws, um, the uh, blood sacrifices for sins, and the stoning to death f for sinning against the Lord so kind of one of the reasons why it says the law killeth that's why and we're under grace now where you're given the, your whole life to make things right with God instead of you being punished immediately so we're going to go ahead and jump right on in here I have a I ain't going to say a whole lot to read but it is, it's, is, it, is not going to take too long to go through um, cause I said, it's pretty much a straightforward reading. So, and I do read from the King James Bible. So I kind of like the vows and the arts and the, uh, the, oh, is it, they call it the Oxford English style. I do kind of like those kind of, you know, like reading poetry a little bit today, more of being culture, I guess. But, um, I have been trying to look for a new King James Version, which is, you know, simpler, easier to read, but all of them I find to get the, these images from, it's, uh, I don't really have the means to create the images myself, and all that I find, their images are, they're, they're almost eyesore to look at. And so that's why I stick with these. And I know God approves of the King James Bible because that's the Bible the people obeyed when building America. And God blessed the building of America. So let's jump right on in here. Um, chapter 8. Uh and it came to pass, when Samuel was old, that he made his sons judges over Israel. Now the name of his firstborn was Joel, and the name of his second, Ab uh, Ab Abiah. Sorry. They were judges in Beersheba. And his sons walked not in his ways, but turned aside after lucre, and took bribes, and perverted judgment. What's that say? Does that say that word right? Lucre? L L lucre? I have a hard time saying that one sometimes. My dyslexia kicks in and it's like it's <laughs> it doesn't look like a word. <laughs> Anyways. Lucre. Uh, verse 4. Then all the elders of Israel gathered themselves together and came to Samuel unto Ramah. Now, 
going back to verse three part where it says sons not did not walk in his ways and perverted uh, stuff, you know, wh- wh- did, did perverted things, did not judge properly. You know, the same thing happened to the predecessor of Samuel and so it's like the sons of Eli also they didn't walk in the ways of the Lord and didn't do right so it's kind of been this little trend thing like even today you have a lot of people today that talk about how some of the most you know hypocrite per- perverse you know children are those normally ones of of preachers and stuff and sometimes quite true this is why also um i said before in in the rules of today that jesus put down that if the preacher if that man does not have his house in order which means his children are also obedient then he can't be a preacher and it kind of extends from this that, you know, so at this time Samuel was made judge and his sons were also judges. Then, you know, that's what God called him to be. But, and uh, so, that's where it's, I said that's the, we're on the main differences of today. Where it's like, say, if a man is a preacher, but all of a sudden his house falls out of order, he is no longer allowed to be a preacher. He's supposed to quit to get his house in order. To do what he's supposed to be doing to focus on his house. So, but, you know, like I said, but if this was a trend. At the, I'm going to say it's a trend, but this is kind of like what happened. Um... It even kind of happens today. Anytime somebody like, say, corrupt politicians, their children grow up with their parents having this power, so the children tend to be wicked, you know, and sinful and spoiled brats, mostly. Kind of like the same thing that, you know, they feel entitled to be certain ways because of who their parents are. But this is why also the parents are supposed to make sure that, you know, all parents are supposed to make sure their children grow up with the knowledge of, you know, especially doing chores, you know, supposed to supposed to keep them humble. You know, if you didn't have a lot growing up, that doesn't mean that if you become more successful that you spoil your children because a lot of times that literally that spoils them. And they become entitled brats. And God says, if you spoil your children, well, say no. If you don't discipline your children, you have no love for your children. Or a parent that doesn't discipline their child has no love for the child. So, but God calls like you know. Well, to that now, uh, Jesus calls for us to live humble lives. This helps. This help keeps things from being spoiled, <laughs> and it gets annoying sometimes living a humble life. But because sometimes you you want to have certain things, but you have to always remember that just because if something is durable and costs a lot, it's totally different than having something that's fancy and costs a lot. Fancy we're not allowed, but something durable and going to last a long time. That's okay. So, anyways, let's jump back up on here. Verse 5. Uh, and said unto him, Behold, thou art old, and thy sons walk not in thy ways. Now make us a king to judge us like all the nations. But the thing displeased Samuel when they said, Give us a king to judge us. And Samuel prayed unto the Lord. And the Lord said unto Samuel, Hearken unto the voice of the people in all that they say unto thee. For they have not rejected thee, but they have rejected me, that I should not reign over them. Now we have to remember that. That's kind of like what we had today when people won't 
the politicians and the government to lead them, to reign over them, these people that want socialism, it's because they, they, they fail to do it themselves. And if they, tur if they would turn to God and live by God's rules, they would clearly see that they don't need a government, they don't need any leader because they already have one. And it's the only just leader you truly w will ever have. But continue on verse 8. According to all the works which they have done since the day that I brought them up out of Egypt, even unto this day, wherewith they have forsaken me and served other gods, so do they also unto thee. Now therefore hearken unto their voice, howbeit yet protest solemnly unto them, and show them the manner of the king that shall reign over them. And Samuel told all the words of the Lord unto the people that asked of him a king. And he said, This will be the manner of the king that shall reign over you. He will take your sons and appoint them for himself, for his chariots, and to be his horsemen, and some shall run before his chariots. Now, if you listen to these words carefully, you can kind of see the same thing also happens when you have a government and anybody that you put over you. Um... That's why originally our Constitution, the people we elect, they are not over us. They are our representatives. They don't rule us. They're supposed to represent us. Even the president's not supposed to rule us. The president's supposed to primarily be there to help with you know, international affairs and also be the commander-in-chief of the military. Our government's supposed to have very little to do in our lives. Taxes were not even supposed to be mandatory. But still, here we are today. So, anyways. Continue on, twelve, verse 12. And he will appoint him captains over thousands and captains over fifties, and will set them to ear his ground and to reap his harvest and to make his instruments of war and instruments of his chariots. And he will take your daughters to be confectionaries and to be cooks and to be bakers and he will take your fields and your vineyards and your olive yard, olive yards even the best of them and give them to his servants and he will take the tenth of your seed and of your vineyards and give to his officers and to his servants now we look today clearly the government takes land they say oh, so that's government property government don't own anything that's all taxpayer stuff, but they always want to say, this is federal land, this is government land, and blah, blah, blah. You know, if you don't pay your property taxes, guess what the government does? They take your land. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. We have a lot of unjust things going on today, but yeah, that's a different story. Verse 16. And he will take your manservants and your maidservants and your goodliest young men and your asses and put them to his work. He will take the tenth of your sheep, and ye shall be his servants. And ye shall cry out in that day because of your king, which ye shall have chosen you, and the Lord will not hear you in that day. Nevertheless, the people refused to obey the voice of Samuel, and, and they said, Nay, but we will have a king over us, that we also may be like all the nations, and that our king may judge us and go before us and fight our battles. So I always thought this was hilarious where it says, we need somebody to be in charge, someone that can fight our battles for us. I'm like, where do you think he gets an army from? He won't fight the battles for you. He will take you and fight the battles. He'll use you as the pawns in a chess game to fight battles. It's like in there. It's, I mean, sometimes battles have to have to be fought to you know extinguish tyranny but what happens when the people that's used to extinguish extinguish tyranny becomes tyrannical well the old old country terms is they got too big for the britches we're having that problem today anyways verse 21 and samuel heard all the words of the people and he rehearsed them in the ears of the lord and the Lord said to Samuel, Hearken unto their voice, and make them a king. And Samuel said unto the men of Israel, Go ye every man unto his city. 
chapter 9. Now there was a man of Benjamin whose name was Kish, the son of Abiel, the son of Zeror, the son of Becherath, the son of Aphia, a Benjamite, a mighty man of power. And he had a son whose name was Saul, a choice young man and a goodly and there was not among the children of Israel a goodlier person than he. I think it's hilarious how it's like growing up you said the word goodlier. <laughs> That's not a word. I'm like, it's in the Bible. <laughs> it's like, they get mad at you. <laughs> Trying to teach you English English class. I just I always kind of giggle when I read that word in the Bible because I remember we used to kind of pick at the teachers in English class for that. <laughs> That's not a word. It's in the Bible. Anyways, from his shoulders and upward, he was higher than any of the people. And the asses of Kish, Saul's father, were lost. And Kish said to Saul, his son, Take now one of the servants with thee, and arise, go seek the asses. Which means donkeys. And he passed through Mount Ephraim, and passed through the land of... Uh, Shalisha, but they found them not. Then they passed through the land of Shalem, and there and there they were not. And he passed through the land of the Benjamites, but they found them not. And when they were come to the land of Zuf, Saul said to a servant that was with him, Come, and let us return, lest my father leave carrying for the asses and take thought uh, for us. And he said unto him, Behold now, there is in this city a man of God, and he is an honorable man. All that he saith cometh surely to pass. Now let us go thither, peradventure he can show us our way that we should go. Then said Saul to a servant, But behold, if we go, what shall we bring the man? For the bread is spent in our vessels, and there is not a present to bring the man of God. What have we? And the servant answered Saul again, and said, Behold, I have here a hand, uh, at hand the fourth part of a shekel of silver that will I give to the man of God to tell us our way. Before time in Israel, when a man went to inquire of God, thus he spake, Come and let us go to the seer, for he that is now called a prophet was before time called a seer. So, in some situations, some people used to think, you know, calling someone a seer was um, um, a wicked person. But it wasn't really, you know, just prophet or seer. It'd be the same thing as the slang languages that we have of today of some things, so. But yeah, this is why that gives you the definition, because that's what they're going to call Samuel here shortly. <laughs> Verse 10. Then said Saul to his servant, Well said, come, let us go. So they went unto the city where the man of God was. And as they went up the hill to the city, they found young maidens going out to draw water, and said unto them, Is the seer here? And they answered them and said, He is, behold, he is before you. Make haste now, for he come today to the city, for there is a sacrifice of the people today in the high place. As soon as ye be come into the city, ye shall straightway find him, before he go up to the high place to eat. For the people will not eat until he come, because he doth bless the sacrifice. And afterwards they eat that be bidden. Now therefore get you up, for about this time ye shall find him. And they went up into the city, and when they were coming to the city, behold, Samuel came out against them for to go up to the high place. Now the Lord had told Samuel in his ear a day before, Saul came saying, Tomorrow about this time I will send thee a man out of the land of Benjamin, and thou shalt anoint him to be captain over my people Israel, that he may save my people out of the hand of the Philistines. For I have looked upon my people, because their cry is come unto me. And when Samuel saw Saul, the Lord said unto him, Behold, the man whom I spake to thee of, 
This same shall reign over my people. Then Saul drew near to Samuel in the gate and said, Tell me, I pray thee, where the seer's house is. And Samuel answered Saul and said, I am the seer. Go up before me unto the high place, for ye shall eat with me today, and go tomorrow. I will, uh, oh, sorry, and to and tomorrow I will let thee go. Sorry, my dyslexia kicked in there. <laughs> and will tell thee all that is in thine heart. And as for thine asses that were lost three days ago, set not thy mind on them, for they are found. And on whom is all the desire of Israel is not is it not on thee and on all thy father's house and Saul answered and said am not I a Benjamite of the smallest of the tribes of Israel and my family the least of all the families of the tribe of Benjamin wherefore then speakest thou so to me and Samuel took Saul and his servant and brought them into the parlor and made them sit in the chiefest place among them that were bidden, which were about thirty persons. And Samuel said unto the cook, Bring the portion which I gave thee, of which I said unto thee, Set it by thee. And the cook took up the shoulder, and that which was upon it, and set it before Saul. And Samuel said, Behold, that which is left, set it before thee, and eat. For unto this time hath it been kept for thee, since I said, I have invited the people. So Saul did eat with Samuel that day. And when they were come down from the high place into the city, Samuel communed with Saul upon the top of the house. And they arose early, and it came to pass about the spring of the day that Sam Samuel called Saul to the top of the house, saying, Up, that I may send thee away. And Saul arose, and they went out, both of them, he and Samuel, abroad. And as they were going down to the end of the city, Samuel said to Saul, Bid the servant pass on before us. And he passed on. But stand thou still a while, that I may show thee the word of God. Then Samuel took a vial of oil, and poured it upon his head, and kissed him, and said, Is it not because the Lord hath a anointed thee to be captain over his inheritance? Then thou art departed from me today, then thou shalt find two men by Rachel's sepulchre in the border of Benjamin and Zelza, and they will say unto thee, The asses which thou wentest to seek are found. And lo, thy father hath left the care of the asses, and sorroweth for you, saying, What shall I do for my son? Then shalt thou go on forward from thence, and thou shalt come to the plain of Tabor, and there shall meet thee three men going up to God to Bethel, one carrying three kids, and another carrying three loaves of bread, and another carrying a bottle of wine, and they will salute thee, and give thee two loaves of bread, which thou shalt receive of their hands. After that thou shalt come to the hill of God, where is the garrison of the Philistines? And it shall come to pass, when thou art come thither to the city, that thou shalt meet a company of prophets coming down from the high place with a psaltery and a tabret and a pipe and a harp before them, and they shall prophesy. And the Spirit of the Lord will come upon thee, and thou shalt prophesy with them, and shalt be turned into another man. And let it be when these signs are come unto thee, that thou do as occasion serve thee, for God is with thee. And thou, and thou shalt go down before me to Gilgal, and behold, I will come down unto thee to offer burnt offerings and to sacrifice sacrifices of peace offerings. Seven days shalt thou tarry till I come to thee and show thee what thou shalt do. And it was so that when he had turned his back to go from Samuel, God gave him another heart. And all those signs came to pass that day. Now this part where it says God gave him another heart, it's kind of like the same thing for us people that when we're today, if you're a Christian and you've been saved, you've been gifted the Holy Spirit, 
which is another heart. You know, it starts to change your heart, and makes you a different person. You start seeing the world through God's eyes. You start understanding more, and you start desiring, you know, to follow the Lord. And so, it's uh, if you refuse the Holy Spirit then of course you do choose that but it's uh, not a good thing it's <laughs> if you've been gifted the Holy Spirit and then you turn away from the Holy Spirit you know turn back to the world if you turn too far away that's when your name can be blotted out of the book of life the Bible says you have to watch out for that so but yeah this is you know stuff like this been going on for a long time um, you know the gifting of the Holy Spirit and stuff, but it's it's guaranteed. It's told more of what that is in the New Testament because when Jesus says that you know when you are saved, this is the gift that you receive. Because in Old Testament, it is clearly works alone is how you get access to God's kingdom. And in New Testament, it's no longer just works alone; it's works and faith. This is why we're gifted the Holy Spirit. So, um, anyways, let's continue on here. Verse 10. And when they came thither to the hill, behold, a company of prophets met him, and the Spirit of God came upon him, and he prophesied among them. And it came to pass, when all that knew him before time saw that, behold, he prophesied among the prophets. Then the people said one to another, What is this that is come unto the son of Kish? Is Saul also among the prophets? And one of the same place answered and said, But who is their father? Therefore it, came, it became a proverb, Is Saul also among the prophets? And when he had made an end of prophesying, he came to the high place. Now, also in these times, if you were able to prophesy and these other things, God will speak to you directly. That's also what the Holy Spirit does for us as Christians is when we ask questions, we can receive answers. This is why it says, you know, when you pray, you know, and wait to hear from the Lord and stuff, the lay, you know, the Lord will speak to you in a way. And eventually over time you learn to how to hear. Um, but yeah, so this is the gift that's being given to Saul. And... So, you know, it's, you're a different person whenever, whenever you're able to feel the Holy Spirit and hear, you know, hear from the Holy Spirit to be, you know, your, um, what's the best way to say it? I would guess something like an interpreter, <laughs> you know, you, you speak to the Holy Spirit and then the Holy Spirit comes back to you with God's word type deal is kind of it's kind of how, how it's work is it's, it's it's like you know you have a you know a landline you have a straight connection to god where you know other people that don't have this they don't understand it they never will and it's why jesus always says he who has an ear let him hear when you are gifted the holy spirit and stuff you now have the ear to hear better let's continue on and Saul's uncle said unto him and to his servant, Whither ye went? Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Whither went ye? And he said, To seek the asses. And when we saw that they were nowhere, we came to Samuel. And Saul's uncle said, Tell me, I pray thee, what Samuel said unto you. And Saul said unto his uncle, He told us plainly that the asses were found, but of the matter of the kingdom whereof Samuel spake, he told him not. And Samuel called the people together unto the Lord to Mispah. And said unto the children of Israel, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, I brought up Israel out of Egypt and delivered you out of the hand of the Egyptians and out of the hand of all kingdoms and of them that oppressed you. And ye have this day rejected your God, whom himself saved you out of all your adversaries and your tribulations, and ye have said unto him, Nay, but set a, a king over us. Now therefore present yourselves before the Lord by your tribes and by your thousands. 
And when Samuel had caused all the tribes of Israel to come near, the tribe of Benjamin was taken. When he had caused the tribe of Benjamin to come near by their families, the family of uh, Matri was taken, and Saul, the son of Kish, was taken. And when they sought him, he could not be found. Therefore they inquired of the Lord further, and if the man should yet come thither. And the Lord answered, Behold, he hath hid himself among the stuff. And they ran and fetched him thence. And when he stood among the people, he was higher than any of the people from his shoulders and upward. And Samuel said unto all the people, See ye him whom the Lord hath chosen, that there is none like him among all the people. And all the people shouted and said, God save the king. Now, being a humble person for the Lord, I can clearly see why Saul hid himself and didn't speak of it much because if you're a person of, you know, simple matters and stuff you really i mean to be king over a nation that's that's a huge responsibility it's like you know now everybody's looking to you for the answers to everything and if the nation is successful it's your doing but also if the nation fails it's your doing you know it's (laughs) it's Yeah, that's a huge responsibility that most most people with a common sense mind does not want that job. People that seek jobs like that, they desire stuff like that. Those are the people that you don't want to give those jobs to because normally they want it for personal perverse way reasons and stuff. You know, they just they like power. You know, kind of like most of politicians today in America and a lot of all the places around the world. The people love power. They love it. You know, it's like those are the people you need to worry about a lot. Let's continue on. Then Samuel told the people the manner of the kingdom and wrote it in a book and laid it up before the Lord. And Samuel sent all the people away, every man to his house. And Saul also went home to Gibeah. And there went with him a band of men whose hearts God hath touched. So instead of a castle or this and the other, Saul just went home. <laughs> it's like, okay, I'm, I guess I'm king. All right, <laughs> go home. It's like, what, what else is he to do? All right, verse 27. But the children of Belial said, how shall this man save us? And they despised him and brought him no presents, but he held his peace. Then Nahash the Ammonite came up um, and encamped against Jabesh Gilead. And all the men of Jabesh said unto Nahash, Make a covenant with us that we will serve thee. And Nahash the Ammonite answered them, On this condition will I make a covenant with you that I may thrust out all your right eyes and lay it for a reproach upon all Israel. This is somebody that clearly doesn't want the people to surrender and be servants of them they want to punish them why i don't know it doesn't really say but still yeah it's called it's called one of those situations where you're put between a rock and a hard place all right verse three and the elders of jabesh said unto him give us seven days respite that we may send messengers unto all the coast of israel and then if there be no man to save us we will come out to thee Then came the messengers to Gibeah of Saul and told the tidings in the ears of the people and all the people lifted up their voices and wept. That's a weird thing though. This Nahash uh, and Ammonite came amongst the uh, against Jabesh Gilead and now it's going to give them seven days to find anybody that may help them. (laughs) And so I was okay. We'll just sit here for seven days. Huh. Even the power hungry people had honor, it seems. <laughs> Says, okay. Uh, anyway, continue on, verse 5. And behold, Saul came after the herd out of the field, and Saul said, What aileth the people that they weep? And they told him the tidings of the men of Jabesh. 
And the Spirit of God came upon Saul when he heard those tidings, and his anger was kindled greatly. And he took a, a yoke of oxen, there's two, you know, there's normally two, two oxes and one yoke, um, and hewn them in pieces when he slaughtered them, cut them up, and sent them throughout all the coast of Israel by the hands of messengers, saying, Whosoever cometh not forth after Saul and after Samuel, so shall it be done unto his oxen. And the fear of the Lord fell on the people, and they came out with one consent. And when he numbered them in Bezek, the children of Israel were 300,000, and the men of Judah 30,000. And they said unto the messengers that came, Thus sh shall ye say unto the men of Jabesh-Gilead, Tomorrow by that time the sun be hot, ye shall have help. And the messengers came and showed it to the men of Jabesh, and they were glad. Therefore the men of Jabesh said, Tomorrow we will come out unto you, and ye shall do with us all that seemeth good unto you. Talking to that Hatius person again. And it was so on, on the morrow that Saul put the people in three companies, and they came into the midst of the host in the morning watch, and slew the Ammonites until the heat of the day. And it came to pass that they which remained were scattered, so that two of them were not left together. And the people said unto Samuel, Who is he that said, Shall Saul reign over us? Bring the men that we may put them to death. And Saul said, There shall not a man be put to death this day. For today the Lord hath wrought salvation in Israel. Then said Samuel to the, to the people, Come, and let us go to Gilgal, and renew the kingdom there. And all the people went to Gilgal, and there they made Saul king before the Lord in Gilgal. And there they sacrificed sacrifices of peace offerings before the Lord, and there Saul and all the men of Israel rejoiced greatly. And that's the end of this lesson. The introduction of the first king of Israel. And as I said, it's pretty straightforward reading. So it didn't take too long. Four chapters, a couple of them kind of short chapters. So it's like two of them actually ended up as being like one chapter. <laughs> But still, um, I said, I hope you enjoy these studies. And I hope I didn't brutalize some of the names too badly. But I am getting better. It's, uh, I said, I was born with dyslexia. So I think I'm a whole lot better than what I used to be, anyways. <laughs> But why do I do these Bible studies? Because this is what the Lord put on my heart to do. This is my work that uh, for him that he wants me to do. So this is what I do. And I tell you right now, I wished I had something like this when I was young, growing up, and was studying the Bible. Because it would have helped me out greatly. And I, I hope I'm reaching somebody out there and helping them. I said that's the end of this lesson today, and so I'm going to go ahead and just end this lesson, uh, end this whole lesson here. So remember, uh, prayers do work. Um, you have to always make sure you pray for yourself. Never think of yourself, you know, too good to fail, because we all fail. God says the best of us is nothing but filthy rags in the eyes of God, in the eyes of the Lord. The best of us is nothing but filthy rags. I mean, that even goes to John the Baptist. And I know for a fact I'm nowhere near as, you know, as good of a servant of the Lord as John the Baptist. I mean, Moses, Abraham. I mean, <laughs> You know, people far, far more obedient to the Lord than me. And I was like, if they're nothing but filthy rags in the eyes of the Lord, you're gracious. I'm, 
I look I look like uh, a shop rag that's probably went through a turbo. But I said, you know, the whole thing is we're we're not going to be perfect, and we're to know this. But the whole thing is we're not to give up on trying. We're to be Christ-like. We're to try to be perfect. If you just give up on it and say to heck with it and you just turn back to the world, then you failed. So, I mean, God doesn't hold us against us when we accidentally sin. He knows it's going to happen. It's when we intentionally sin and have no desires to stop. That's when you you have a big worry on your hands then. Because chances are... If you have no desire to stop, that means, one, either the Holy Spirit was never a part of you, or the Holy, or you're, you are silencing the Holy Spirit enough to where you can no longer hear him. And that's, 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 uh, that's something to worry about. But, so, remember, pray for yourself. Pray for your friends and family. Pray for this country or whatever country you're in. It's we 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 all need the Lord. We need his guidance. We need his love and mercy. Without it we're lost. Those who understand this knows what I'm talking about. Those who don't, well, hopefully the Lord reaches your heart and touches it and then you start to understand more. This is how you are to be saved. The Lord must touch your heart and start calling to you to come to him. And when he does that such thing, that's when you need to pray for forgiveness. Ask the Lord to come into your heart. Ask, you know, not really ask, but tell tell God about how you believe in Christ. You have to believe in Christ to be a Christian. You have to have that faith of knowing that Christ is the Son of God, that he died for our sins, and that God resurrected him on the third day, and that he ascended into heaven. It's uh, You have to have the faith in this of knowing that that's true. That God is real, that God's the creator, and what his son did for us. And once you have that faith in believing in God and believing in Christ, and then also knowing that you're not worthy, but you want to be, that you want, want to be a part of God's, God's family, he'll call to you. And you better answer, because the Bible says he'll call upon you for a time, but if you reject him, you know, if you constantly reject him, that he will quit calling upon you. And when that happens, the Bible says that you are now lost and can't be saved. Um, I mean, you can still have salvation, but you will have to come to the Lord he won't he won't at, he won't call upon you until you turn turn to him it's the way it's worded anyways so but yeah you got to pray you got to pray prayer works and the world needs it we all need it especially these corrupt governments and these stupid wars and conflicts and people power hungry and so to me, I have two prayers for the power-hungry people. Either I pray that God touches their heart and they quit being power-hungry and be more humble, or they're just removed from power. One or the other. Because they dang sure shouldn't be there. So it's either make them a new, new, new person in Christ or get them out of that position so they quit harming people. 
<sighs> Anyways, until next time, God bless, good night, and goodbye.